and remembering that our fixed costs are really something we're trying to make up, which is what we're going to go into contribution margin. So I'm going to tell a story here of like when I when I started my one of my first businesses being a recording studio, I had a, I didn't understand business well enough at that time. I was 18, 19, and I invested a lot in equipment. So I had a lot of fixed costs. And I didn't understand and I also had a lot of uh, costs that didn't change over time um, that I couldn't get out of like rent and um, and hiring people to assist me with my assist me with the recording studio, like labor. And so uh, I didn't understand how much money it would take or how much time it would take to get towards those fixed costs. So if I had thought about that question, like how quickly can I recoup my the money I just spent? I would have probably not entered into that business, even though it was a fun business. And so contribution margin helps us think that way. Like that's the, that this is the tool to solve that problem. Um, a, a, com a combination of this contribution margin analysis and then a co and what we just talked about, like figuring out our fixed and variable costs. That, that, that gets us to our break even point eventually. So the contribution margin analysis really is asking us what's our selling price per unit minus our total variable cost per unit. So what does that mean? It's how much money do I get for every unit I sell that contributes towards any of my fixed costs or my personal income, right? It's, this is a non-GAAP, non-financial non accounting metric, but it's extremely valuable. So I, if I'm gonna sell a unit, what's the direct cost related to that unit, the variable costs? Um, so if I'm making the soap, it might be whatever I'm using to create the soap. Like if I'm using fat, I sometimes use oils or fats to create it and the, the sense related to the soap. Um, and so if my, I'm selling it for $20, and then my variable cost is $5, I have a $15 contribution margin. So that'd be going towards my fixed, it'd be what I contributed towards my fixed costs. Another example is I, I used to, I was working on a board game for a while, this game called uh, Deadly Desserts that got launched. And part of the model that I had built related to it was, well, how much money can we actually make per board game and at what price? Right, that's an important question. Like for a board game, you have to build out all the units and all the you had to have all the cards and you had to have the box and you had to have the shipment cost. All of those are variable costs, right? Costs that you have to make for each unit, and all and you have the storage related to it. And so it turns out it was like about ten to fifteen dollars a game. So you have to sell them for twenty to twenty five dollars a game. But then you ask your question, well, what's all the fixed costs associated with that, the design costs and all of that? And then how many board games do I have to sell in order to make up those costs and then make the profit I'm looking for? Um, and that's where this analysis comes in handy. So we'll just show it here. It's simple algebra, very, very simple, but it's just important to memorize. So contribution, so we have selling price. That's all this is saying, 100. Variable cost is 70. Contribution margin is 30. So 100 minus 70 is 30. Ratio, what's our contribution margin ratio? It's 30%, the 30 divided by the 100. That means for every dollar I sell, I get 30% back as a contribution margin. That's all we're saying here. So we're going to use that now to break, calculate our break even. All that stuff we learned about is how we calculate our break even. And we can do this for any business model. That's what makes this so powerful. Like when you see those people on Shark Tank, that's what we're doing. Like where they're using everything we just learned to calculate out how much their business can make. And then they use that to figure out how much it's worth. And then they try to get investors, right? Like this is all, pretty much your basic toolkit for getting investors or figuring out if the business is viable. So a break-even point in units is our fixed cost divided by our contribution margin per unit. So that's how we determine how many units we need to make to break even. And then we can stress test the business idea. 
Like, can we, do we have enough customers to sell 800 units per month? If we do not, then we shouldn't proceed with this business. Does that make sense? That, like, that's a great way to see if you have a good idea. So um, here they're saying the fixed costs are 24,000. The contribution margin per unit is 30. And then our break even point would be the 24,000 divided by 30, which is 800 per month. We could change up this dollars. So our fixed costs, what are our fixed costs in dollars? 24,000, which our contribution margin ratio is the 30%. And then we can figure out our monthly sales in dollars. So another way to look at it, can we make $80,000 in sales a month? That's what we need to do to break even. And that's a good way to put pressure on the business is figure out how, if you really want to pursue this business, is that how much um, you can sell and trying to figure that out. But that's not the only question we have. The next question, it should be like, you don't want to just break even. Right? That means that you're making absolutely no money. You need to figure out some kind of target income for yourself as well and for your investors. Right? Like If you came to me and said, Devin, I have a great business idea. If you can give me $10,000, I'm going to make you um, absolutely no money. I'll give you your $10,000 back in a year. I would never do that. Right? That's what a break even is determining. It's just saying when you get to even. You'd have to prove out to me how you could double my money or something like that. Like how, Why would I take the risk? So... We'll, we'll go into that as well. Uh, so I had a quick question. Yeah. Um, when you say contribution um, uh, margin per unit, does that basically mean profits? Like how much each unit contributes to your uh, profits or just sale? No, so that's, this price? is where it's different. Profit is completely different, right? Because remember, we, we've talked about it. These definitions are so key, right? Like we've talked about profit from a gross profit from a financial accounting perspective is different because it's something called absorption-based costing, right? It, you, gross profit calculates some of the um, fixed costs, like the overhead costs, into the inventory costs. That's not what we're saying here. We're completely separating fixed costs and variable costs. So what would you mean when you say contribution margin per unit? Contribution margin per unit is quite literally the selling price minus any variable costs. It doesn't consider any of the fixed overhead. Oh, okay. Okay, I get it. None of that fixed, those fixed costs actually get pulled into the inventory costing. Okay. So it's a completely different way of doing the accounting. Like we're completely right. ignoring all of our fixed costs for contribution margin. Thank you. No problem. It's a good question. But it's, a, it's a useful way to think about a business though. Right? It's like a more practical way because we can't always trace all of our overhead costs to our units, it's especially early on in a business when we're trying to validate and stress test the business model. And that's what we're getting to here. So it's a whole different income statement. Right? So a contribution margin income statement has sales, less of variable cost equals a contribution margin. And then we take out our fixed cost to get our income when it's a when this is a break even. How is that different from something called absorption costing, where we have a traditional income statement? We have sales minus cost of sales equals gross profit, minus selling an admin equals income, right? And gross profit, those cost of sales sometimes include some fixed expenses. So it's completely different format, right? The product costs have some fixed and some variable, and the period costs have some fixed and some variable for in the income statement. Here, we're separating those completely out. All the fixed selling costs would be in the fixed costs, 
and all the variable would be in the variable class. Good question. So what's a cost volume profit chart? So here we can see if we graph the line out of total costs and total sales and cross them with each other, we can find our break even point, which we just calculated this 800 or $80,000. And everything below that, the area in between the two lines, below is the loss area. And the area between the two lines, when we get above the break even point, is a profit area. And so all these are estimates. So we might make optimistic estimates and pessimistic estimates and then revise our break even point based off these estimates. We, we might say, we haven't tested this product in the market. This is a very good standard practice, by the way, in, the, in business. It's called a sensitivity analysis. And so what you do is say, I think that optimistically, uh, from an optimistic viewpoint, we might be able to sell this $105, but maybe the market changes and we can only sell it for $95. Maybe we get some advantages from the costing and we, maybe we can get a deal on the fixed costs. So we do a best case, a worst case scenario, and then we take the average of it to get a middle case, a most likely scenario. That's all we're doing here is, these are all estimates. So these are just different ways to get to our estimates. So what are some different applications for this cost volume profit analysis? One is this concept of margin of safety. So the question here is, how, how safe are we? How safe is our break even? That's all it's asking. So margin of safety is how safe is our business from not being profitable? Or how, clo how close are we to the line? So we take our expected sales minus our break even sales um, over our expected sales. So here we're saying we have $100,000 of expected sales and we have an $80,000 of break even sales. And so if we take the difference, that's our margin and safety in dollars. And then if we divide that by our expected sales, we get our margins of safety percentage. That tells us that our business has a 20% margin of uh, safety. It's telling us that, hey, we have some room. So if I'm investing multiple businesses and I'm worried about, let's say I don't have a lot of cash reserves, I need this to be a winning business. This might be very important to me. I might choose a business with more margin of safety where I know like, hey, hey, I have less risk. You can also back into income. Computing income from sales and costs. So we can take our sales and our variable costs to get our contribution margin. And then if we reduce our, it by the fixed costs, we can get our income for a period. So it is saying we can make a full income statement based off of it, a variable costing income statement. And then this is the last thing I was talking about is the, the target of net income, dollar sales target. Target the dollar sales target. So let's say I want to make sure that I my actually make money from my business, right? I want to actually make a profit or an income for myself. So we'd say our fixed costs twenty four thousand dollars. We say if I'm going to invest in this, I want at least a target income of twelve thousand dollars, and then we take our contribution margin ratio how much we contribute towards our fixed costs, our income based on every product um, we sell, which was 30%. And then we can get our dollar sales target. That's just this plus this divided by this. And so then we can ask ourselves again, 
do we think we can sell $120,000 a month to get hit our target net income? We can also do that by units too. It's if, instead of using the contribution margin ratio, we use the contribution margin dollar per unit. We get the number of units we can sell. This is just a different way to visualize how many, um, let me put it here. It's a different way to visualize how many ways that uh, unit sales. It's a different way to visualize how many ways we can reach our outcome and if it's possible. Like if 1,200 units, <clears throat> That might be really easy to attain in some businesses. Like what if I'm selling burritos? I can probably sell 1200 burritos a month if I can make a good burrito. But what if I'm selling um, solar panels for houses in the Bay Area? That might be a lot more challenging to hit that goal. Right. Or what about solar panels in like uh, Canada, you know, or somewhere where it's dark for a longer. So unit sales. Okay. So for unit sales, it's just the, the same amount equals 24,000 plus the 12,000 divided the contribution margin per unit, here's the $30. And that's our 1,200 units. And then that's how, this is just showing you how we can find, we can back into our sales. All the equations we just did is just to calculate this out. It all goes back to what we did at the very beginning. It's just figuring out the equations. And then of course we can mess with this. That's all this is saying is we can change our fixed costs if we think that it's gonna change our sales and we can do sensitivity analyses around it. So that's for a single product company. Most companies sell multiple products. And so we might calculate break even for a multiple product company. And that's what we're going to go into next. Is there any question first on break even analysis for a single product company? Yes. 